Hi friend, it isn't a secret that during soldering the flux evaporates and gases are generated, which we inhale, and they among other things are harmful to health. Taking into account the fact that many of these fluxes may be from unknown manufacturers, it isn't worth risking. It is better to organize a smoke trap immediately. Sometimes it is necessary to perforate the wall to install the exhaust system, but if you do not solder very often and soldering is more likely to be a hobby than a profession for you, then it makes a little sense to use a complicated system. For such situations, you can use smoke traps. In fact, this is a fan that will suck up the smoke formed during soldering. The samples found in online stores didn't suit me because they work from the mains. I prefer to make an autonomous and compact smoke absorber. It is very convenient. In this project, we used ready models. We didn't have to assemble anything ourselves. But if you are the radio amateur, you will often face the process of creating printed circuit boards for your projects. The GLCPCB website will help you in this matter. This is a high-tech factory for creating printed circuit boards of any complexity level for your Gerber files. Prices start from $2 for 10 pieces. GLCPCB is one of the leaders on the market with many years of experience and is our constant partner. A link to the website is in the description. Without thinking twice, I decided to print the casing on a 3D printer. Although in principle it could be made from scrap materials in half an hour, it took 15 hours to make it in on the printer. But in the end came out pretty good boxing. You will find a link to the model for printing in the description. For compactness, I decided to use a standard 80mm fan from a computer power supply unit. The device has its own battery. The capacity is enough for almost two hours of continuous operation of the fan at maximum power. A lithium-ion battery of 1700 mAh was taken from smartphone. Since the battery voltage is only 3.7 volts and the fan needs about 12 volts for normal operation, the MT3608 boost converter was used. The battery can be charged from any USB port. For charging, a board based on the TP4056 chip is used. If necessary, the exhaust fan can be used as a stationary. The charge module makes it possible to simultaneously recharge the battery and power the fan. Let's go back to the converter board. It has a 100 kilo ohm trimmer, which makes it possible to set the output voltage up to 27 volts. I decided to replace this resistor with a variable one and bring it out to adjust the fan speed. But the trouble is that at the maximum position of the variable resistor, all 27 volts will go to the fan and it is dangerous. To avoid this, we need to replace the specified resistor to 3.9 kilo ohm. This will limit the maximum output voltage in the range of 18 to 20 volts. Practice shows that such fans can maintain up to 20 volts. So, depending on the amount of smoke, we can increase or decrease the performance of the fan. The converter and the charge module will cool well because located directly in front of the fan. For the converter, this is especially important since in such a mode of operation it is heated hard. The power switch could be any, you can take from the computer power supply. To protect the fan, a standard grill was used, and I added piece of fabric which simultaneously plays the role of a filter. I didn't make out very neatly, but this doesn't affect the work. Well, in principle the device is ready, it remains to test it in action. The main drawback that has been noticed is the low performance of the fan, so if anyone decides to assemble a similar smoke absorber, it is worth using high-speed fans. If dimensions aren't important to you, then the use of 120mm fans is preferable. The main advantage is compactness and autonomy. Moreover, the set speed of the cooler will not fall as the battery discharges since converter provides a stable output voltage regardless of input voltage and when the battery voltage is below 3 volts, the protection system on the charge controller automatically turns off the power. Well friends, I hope this simple device will be a nice addition to your radio corner. 
please don't forget to rate the video and click on the bell to be updated. If you have any questions, you can always contact our group. All the rest of the information you can find in the description under the video. On this, I say goodbye. Until we meet again, with you was Kaysian TV.